In this video, I want to talk about the B cell receptor. I want to talk about its structure and how does it recognize antigen. So we're going to first look at its structure. So the B cell receptor is really nothing else than a membrane stack anti antibody. So if you normally think about that's kind of this Y-shaped molecule that looks like an antibody, well, then you just add these two feet there and then you have a BCR. So BCRs, let's write this also down, are cell surface antibodies. And they contain two identical heavy chains and two light chains. So you can clearly here see the heavy chain and then the light chain, which is just a shorter one, so therefore light. And then we can split up the heavy chain and the light chain into a variable region and a constant region. And so you can see here that each, the light and the heavy chains, have a variable and a constant region. I abbreviated this with V for variable region and a C for constant region. Let's write this also down and add some more details. So the heavy chain is made out of a constant region and there are actually five different isotypes. So again, isotypes are genes that have a very similar function, but are not identical. And there are five different isotypes for the heavy chain, mu, delta, gamma, alpha, and epsilon. And again, these are the isotypes. And then we have a variable region. And also the light chain is made out of a constant region. Here we have two isotypes, that's delta and kappa, and then we have a variable region. And in contrast to the heavy chain where the different isotypes have different functionality, so a mu constant region will give rise to an IgM antibody, a gamma constant region will give rise to an IgG antibody, they do different things. IgM can do di does different things than IgG. In contrast, the isotopes of the light chain do not have any functional consequence. So it really doesn't matter. Some have lambda, some have kappa, but there is no clinical significance. And before we get to the next point, here you can just see in this nomenclature box, again, what we just discussed. So we have we can think about an antibody consisting out of a heavy chain and a light chain, but we can also further split up the heavy chain into the constant and the variable regions. Same for the light chain. The next characteristic that I want to discuss is the antigen binding site. And it turns out that the combined N termini of the heavy and the light chain form the antigen binding site. So I'm going to show you this antigen binding site here. That's kind of the site that recognizes the antigen. And again, you can clearly see it's made out of heavy and light chain. And it lies within the variable region. And that's also makes sense from the wording because we said the adaptive immune system is a part of the system that can adapt to any possible invader. And so it needs to have a lot of variability and diversity in order to recognize anything. And it recognizes it with its variable region. And also, if you wonder, N termini just means the start of the protein and the C terminus is the end of the protein. And in the case of the BCR, the C termini stuck into the membrane. So let's write this also down. The C termini of the heavy chains at the base of the BCR are embedded in the cell membrane. Now what you can clearly see that the feet of these antibodies are very short. So you can guess that signaling cannot happen with the feet of the antibody. They're just too short because we eventually need to reach with signaling cascades in nucleus and we're just not going to get down there. So it turns out that there is a signaling domain that the BCR uses. So it doesn't use its own feet, just in, it recognizes the antigen via the antigen binding site. And then this BCR gets active.
activated, but actually the signaling happens via another molecule. It's an associated molecule. It's an alpha beta heterodimer. So let's write this also down. Signaling occurs via associated alpha beta heterodimer. So it's just this alpha chain and a beta chain and it forms a dimer. And because it's not the same, it's not two alpha chains, it's an alpha and a beta, we call it a heterodimer. And also this is going to come up again. I just want to mention it now and I will mention this more often, but it's a very important concept to understand that one single antigen will not get a signaling cascade activated. So you need always a multitude of antigens that bind to several BCRs in order to get BCR cross-linking. So this BCR receptors cross-link and that initiates the signaling cascade. And that means that molecules, proteins that activate BCRs always need to have some motifs that are repetitive because remember the B cell expresses the same BCR all over in this one single cell. So it needs to be recognized by several BCRs in order to activate the B cell and to initiate the signaling cascade via this alpha beta heterodimer. Let's talk next what the BCR recognizes. Remember what I said before that the T cell is our arrogant cell. The T cell only takes peptide and it needs to be presented in a very specific way via MHC molecules. In contrast, the B cell is our humble cell. It takes everything. So it recognizes a wide variety of molecules. It could be intact proteins, amino acids, sugar, nucleic acids, small organic molecules. So we have a much wider variety. That's also very important because we want to make antibodies against a lot of different things. We don't want to be limited to just peptides. Now, what is the ideal B cell antigen? So how does an effective B cell antigen look like? And that's very important and it's going to come up in your vaccine lecture as well, because when we want to develop vaccines, we want to develop them against antigen that make us the best antibodies. And obviously that was a major thought over the last year. How can we make good vaccines? How can we get a good antibody response? So first of all, it needs to be an extracellular macromolecule. And that should make sense because antibodies, they detect extracellular stuff. They cannot get inside a cell. And then antigens need to be in their original confirmation. And that's very important because the B cell epitopes are often portions of macromolecules and the folding of the macromolecules often creates epitopes to which the B cell receptor then reacts. So this original confirmation, this 3D structure matters. And that's also in big contrast to the T cell, because remember, the T cell reacts against peptides and they have already been digested. They end up in the endosome and then they're going to be loaded onto MHC. There's no original 3D structure left anymore. And then also the epitope must be on the surface of a macromolecule. And that should also make sense because if it's not on the surface, the BCR cannot recognize it. The BCR doesn't get into cells. That concludes the video on the BCR receptor structure and what it recognizes.